Poetry of Jenny by Gerard McHugh. Jenny was still emoting about her poem. The poses of the others in the circle told me that her poem was important, vital even. Jenny had brought up her poem when talking about how she'd recently gone off anything that tasted of oranges. Because she was peeling one when, when she was alone in her house, and she'd a paper cut she'd forgotten about on the tip of her index finger. And as the, she pierced through the soft, squishy pulp, the sting of the juice entering her paper cut reminded her of the pain of arguing with her mother, and how she wished their relationship wasn't so dysfunctional because she would never have another mother-daughter relationship in this life, as she'd chosen not to have children this time around. And she started thinking about the pain of childbirth and periods. That's the point where I zoned out and started thinking about how boring the night was, and how I probably wouldn't be keeping in touch with these people after I went to university. My recounting of a funny sketch from the television the night before fell out of my mouth like a yolkless egg. None of this lot had seen the show. They were too busy thinking about important stuff, like Jenny's poetry, probably. The thought of them all squirrelled away in their bedrooms, all unknowingly in sync, wanking off to the idea of Jenny and her deep thoughts, made me laugh out loud. Well, more of a happy grunt than an actual laugh, but ooh, they'd heard it and they were all staring at me. Jenny started to cry. Her face seemed to ask if I thought she was fake. And as much as I tried to keep my expression frozen, yeah, that's exactly what I thought of her. You bastard, Clinton shouted, punching me in the mouth. In that split second as my head recoiled, I figured I should lay down on the ground and roll about as if that had just really hurt. I could quite easily kick the shite out of Clinton. But nobody here was on my side. Pretty Jenny the poet was everyone's favourite. The glue, or some other sticky substance that held our little group together. I bit down hard on my lip to make sure it bled. Now, much as Clinton had just exposed his love pangs for Jenny, or my Genevieve, as he often called her, he'd also shown a violent streak, which this lot did not tolerate. Gavin and Amon, seizing their chance to move up a rung on the Jenny ladder, led him to the hall to lecture him on non-violence. I moved to the kitchen to splash my face with cold water. Handfuls of it hit my skin and fell back down over the dishes I hadn't bothered taking out of the sink yet. Little diluted drops of my blood ran over the cups and saucers, most of it disappearing undetected down the plug hole, but some of it remained, also undetected. Maybe it would dry into the crockery so that some small part of me would live on in this house, meeting the family at mealtimes, or over a cup of coffee intended for a solitary moment. Maybe I should write poetry too. It took me a moment to realise that Jenny was standing right behind me. Oh, sorry about that, I said, turning to her. Was it really that bad? she asked. She held her hand close to her face, as if she wanted to touch her mouth, or she maybe was signalling that my lip was still bleeding. I couldn't be sure. No, 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 I said hurriedly, reassuring her. The opposite. I just get nervous in the face of beauty. <laughs> That's why I laughed. It just, it popped into my head, like, what's the worst thing I could do right now? You know, like when you're in trouble at school. I'm still too immature to understand deep stuff like poetry. Jenny took off her scarf and wet the end of it under the tap. She wrung it out and started dabbing at my lip. Does it hurt? She asked. A little. Not anymore, really, I said, letting her continue. She smiled. Her expression completely changed, as if my approval had some sort of intense power over her. Maybe she fancied me. Or maybe all that make-himself-conscious stuff from pulling websites actually works. You see, I never believed it before. I would love to read your poem, I said. My mum's a dick, and I don't get on with my dad. I'd fight him, but violence is not the answer, I said, nodding towards the hallway, where Clinton could be heard protesting, explaining how they were all being so harsh. I nodded. I turned around to Jenny. She was almost drooling. Would you mind if I put you 
in a poem, she asked, Jenny, I would be honoured, I said, leaning in and kissing her. It was going so well, but then my nerve failed. I'm sorry, I said, pulling away. Don't be, she said, leaning in to kiss me. Now, if Jenny did write a poem about me, she never showed me it. And I never admitted that her poetry was crap. We didn't see much of the rest of the group after that night. Jenny and I spent a perfect summer together. Then we split and went to different universities. We tried making it work long distance, but she went and cheated on me around the same time as I was thinking about cheating on her. So you can't really blame the girl. I still acted hard done by though, just to get some sympathy off the chicks around Hall that I wanted to screw. Now that I'm older, I have had no contact with Jenny. I haven't even stopped her on Facebook. But I don't regret our time together. I've never forgotten her. I also didn't forget Clinton punching me in the mouth. When I came home from university that first Christmas, I bumped into him at the grouse. He came up to me all half cut and threw a big meaty arm around my shoulder, asking me how university was working out. He didn't mention Jenny, but I got the feeling he knew we'd broken up. A week after I split with her, Amon emailed me. First time since the party. He didn't mention Jenny, but his timing was just a little bit too close to be a coincidence. I bet he emailed her too, doing the whole good friend thing, like a bottom feeder. Now, waiting for Clinton to mention Jenny was burning a hole in my pocket, so I volunteered it. He acted surprised, but his acting wasn't up to much. I'd never known Clinton to have a girlfriend, but if he'd been the one to break up with Jenny, his conversation would have been a hagiography of his Genevieve's poetic soul and the deep insights they shared, exploring philosophy in late night cafes, only for them to be driven apart by the crude side of beauty, or something equally wanky to do with soulmates and the like. Now, whatever his imaginary Jenny would have done, the one I went out with saw something a little bit different than the men she dated. You know, I don't think we would have gotten together if you hadn't punched me, I said. Forgot I did that, he said. I'm sorry, like. Not sorry enough, I said. And that's when I kicked the shite out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.